So now we're going to state the, four, the uh, techniques that we're going to use to solve force problems. Five steps. Uh, state the steps for solving force problems for each body. Now, by body, I mean object. So if you have um, a, a car moving along a road, that's a body. And we're asking about the forces on that body. We're not, ex we're not so concerned about the forces that body is exerting on everything else, but the forces that are being exerted on that particular body. So that's why uh, when you first start thinking about applying Newton's second law to a problem, first thing you need to identify is the mass. What body are you interested in? And in the case of the car moving down the street, that street it would be um, the, the car, for example. Once you've identified which body you're interested in, then what you want is a free body diagram showing the forces acting on the body. Let's do the car moving down the street. OK, here's your Studebaker moving down the street. It's moving along that, in that direction. We draw a free body diagram showing the forces acting on it. We'll talk more about these various forces later. But um, the weight, the weight of the car, it's being pulled down toward the center of the Earth by gravity. This is the force of gravity. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, what's known as the normal force. We'll talk more about this later, too. It's holding the car up, stopping it from falling through the, through the uh, road. There's the forward force of the engine. Let's just call it F sub E for the force of the engine pushing the car forward. And then there's a... Uh, a drag force. Let's just call it F sub D, the drag force that's trying to slow it down. That is a free body diagram showing all the forces acting on this particular body. Okay? And we normally draw those free body diagrams with the tails of the vectors all pretty much at the center of the body. And there are exceptions when we want to start talking about torques. Uh, we'll, we'll put the, those forces where they actually occur on the, uh, on the car. But for now, we can just put the tails of all of the vectors at the center of the body. Draw the direction of the acceleration, if any. Well, maybe if you're pressing on the gas and accelerating a little bit, then you might be accelerating in the direction of the, of the motion of the car, going faster. So this would be indicating the direction of acceleration. Choose a coordinate system. Normally, we'll take x to the right and, and y up. But in many cases, in this chapter especially, when we have inclined planes, it makes more sense to choose x along the plane, either up or down the plane, and y perpendicular to the plane. It's a free country about your choice of the coordinate system. But a good choice of a coordinate system can save you effort uh, in algebra. Um, and in doing, in this step, in choosing a, a coordinate system, it's usually, almost, I can't think of an exception, it's always best to choose the x direction as the direction of acceleration. So that, in this case, the acceleration is toward the, to, toward the right, and we've chosen x to the right. So in this particular case, we've, um, we've adhered to that uh, suggestion. Apply Newton's second law to find the equations of motion. Well, here's Newton's second law. We've written it down. But to find equations of motion, we're going to have to look at the forces in the x direction. That's the force of the engine and the force of the drag. Uh, the y direction, the normal force, and, and the weight. And um, so we're going to have to separate this into two component equations, one in the x, x direction and the other in the y direction. So normally, you won't even write down this vector equation. You'll just write down these scalar equations and start figuring out which forces are in their x direction. The net force in the x direction would be this Fe minus Fd, et cetera, equals a mass times acceleration in the x direction. OK, let's do some examples. Two people push a stalled car of mass 1,850 kilograms, exerting forces of magnitude 275 newtons. and the other guy's pushing a little harder, 395 newtons, to overcome an opposing force of 560 newtons. 
So that could be from uh, their, some the force of the friction of the tires on the road. Um, so that's the opposing force of 560. Find the acceleration of the car. Well, fine, we can do that. Let's do a free body diagram. In fact, just to remember, just to, to um, a little mnemonic, it always helps. My wife is always big on mnemonics. Um, F A C E S, faces. So to solve um, force problems, all you need to do is to make faces. Okay, force, forces, free body diagram, that's this. We've written the forces down here. A, the direction of the acceleration. Um, well, we don't know for sure whether the opposing force is going to be greater or less than the force of these two guys pushing on it. In fact, we, we can work it out. We did this right here. So it looks like um, 275 plus 395, both to the right, minus 560 to the left, gives 100 newtons to the right. So the net force, this is the net force, 110 newtons, it's to the right, and the acceleration will also be to the right. And I put acceleration separately on this force diagram. I don't put it in here with the other forces so I, so I don't get confused about trying to think about this as a force. Acceleration is not a force. Uh, a push or a pull is a force. Acceleration is what happens as a result of the force. The motion, uh, the change in the velocity is a result of the force. So we can write down uh, Newton's second law. There's really no worry. We don't have to worry at this point about forces in the y direction. We've chosen an x direction in the direction of acceleration. And uh, we can, we've worked out the net force in the x direction. All we have to do is set that equal to the mass times the acceleration. So clearly, if we just divide both sides by 1,850 kilograms, then we'll have the acceleration. And there it is. You can check the, new, the, the units. The newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. The kilograms will cancel the kilogram and the newtons will cancel this kilogram and leave the units of meters per second squared for the acceleration. All right, another example. This is a vector example and an important one. Uh, the paddle, uh, a man's exerting um, a 17 Newton force that is due east on a raft. So, this is kind of a confusing diagram, but let's just look at this one. So if this is east, he's exerting a 17 Newton force toward the east. And uh, if this is north, so in this case, x is to the east and north is, uh, and y is to the north. The wind is exerting a 15 Newton force that's directed 67 degrees north of east. So how do you figure that out? A, an angle that's north of east, you start with east, and then you go 67 degrees north of east. Well, here's east. Here's 67 degrees north of east. The combined mass of the man and the raft is 1,300 kilograms. Find the raft's acceleration. Well, can we do that? We sure can. Uh, F-A-C-E-S, forces, we've got them. Uh, the acceleration, well, we don't know exactly what, what direction the acceleration is going to be in, but the net force is going to be um, somewhere off in this direction, so we're going to guess that the acceleration will be somewhere in, intermediate between these two forces. Um, the coordinate system we've already chosen, we're good there. Equations, let's do that now. The net force in the x direction, how do we find that? So if we're interested in, in the forces in the x direction, then we look for the components of each of these two forces in the x direction. This is what exactly what we did in chapter one, and this is why we did this work in chapter one, finding the components of forces. This force, this 17 Newton force, the, indicated by the blue arrow, points in the x direction. 
So its x component is equal to its magnitude of 17 newtons. So there's the x component of this 17 newton force. Well, what about the 15 newton force? It has components both in the x direction, this component right here, the x component of that force A, it's this horizontal component, and then it also has a y component. And I've expanded this triangle so that you can see it a little bit better. The, the vector magnitude is 15 newtons, or A. We're calling that A. And if we want the x component of this force, Ax, then Ax over the hypotenuse of 15 newtons is going to, let me just write this out, Ax over A, that side over the hypotenuse, is the cosine of 67 degrees. Just like we did in chapter one. Adjacent over hypotenuse is the cosine. So if we want to solve this equation for Ax, we just multiply both sides by A. So multiply this side by A, multiply this side by A, these A's cancel, and we get that Ax is A times cosine of 67 degrees. And so A is 15 newtons, And that's how we find Ax. This 15 newtons times cosine of 67 is exactly what we have right here. The x component of this 15 newton force. So I think, I'm hoping that's given you the idea about how we go about these. Uh, the mass we know, it's 1300 kilograms. Um, now all we have to do is plug all these numbers in, divide by 1300, and we get the acceleration in the x direction. What about the y direction? Uh, we start off with uh, Newton's second law, law, its component in the y direction, and we ask about the components of force in the y direction now, the vertical direction, this one here. So what's the component of this 17 Newton force, which points to the right, what's its component in the vertical direction. And you would say zero, because this vector doesn't point at all in the y direction, and you'd be right. What about this vector? Um, does it have a component in the y direction? Well, yeah, we already said it does. <laughs> There's the ay right here. If we want to find ay, it's this um, leg of the triangle. And Ay over 15 newtons is going to be the sine of 67 degrees. So that would be equivalent to this statement we have here. And we can save time by just saying that Ay equals 15 newtons times the sine of 67 degrees. That's all there is to it. And that's what this um, Y component is here. So again, plugging in 1300 newtons, solving for the acceleration. That's how you do these uh, force problems in uh, two dimensions.